Bill Evans for Peghead Nation, and we're taking a look here at a very, very important banjo in banjo history. This is the Deering Standard Good Time. It's a new one. And Deering started releasing, gosh, a long time ago, might be even 15 years ago, an affordable, well-built, entry-level banjo that was playable. And this is a huge thing because, you know, when you, when you pick one of these Deering Good Times up, the feel of it and the playability is just like a more expensive, even professional quality instrument. And that was a real breakthrough compared to a lot of the entry level instruments that had been available before Deering thought to manufacture this. So we've got some features on this instrument that you'll find on, on more expensive professional instruments. Primarily among them, the 5 eighths of an inch bridge, which is really important. A lot of banjos have very short bridges that make it difficult to get the right hand in a proper playing position. We've also got some pretty good tuning pegs here. They're all geared pegs, including the geared fist string peg. I'll turn it back around so you can see those gears on the, uh, the gear on the fist string. But that, you know, is really crucial too because we want, even with a, um, a banjo that's designed for, for new players or beginning level players, we want something that's easy to tune. And that geared fist string peg is a feature that you don't find on a lot of entry level banjos. And these are really nice tuning pegs as well. Uh, the neck is just exactly the way you want it to be. The action is, is low low enough that you can play all the way up the neck and get some good sounds. Uh, the nut seems to be at a, at, a, at a good distance. They commonly put um, string gauges on that are the professional choices. The string gauges here are exactly what I use with a slightly heavier fourth string. Um, we've got some nice inlay patterns. They'll be, if you, you know, Go shopping for the Deering Good Time. You'll find that there's several models available. This one is what we would call an open back banjo. You can turn it around again, and it's you know commonly used in old time music or frailing claw hammer styles. Or if you're really into Pete Seeger, you might want an open back banjo like he had. But the tr if truth be told, you can play any kind of music on any kind of banjo. The other kind of banjo that is used in bluegrass is a resonator banjo. And the Deering Good Time also comes with a resonator option. Costs a little bit more. And I, the entry level will be exactly the same with just the bold shaped piece of wood that's attached to the back. That helps to send the sound out a bit. But again, this is lighter weight. And if you want, um, you know, if you're a more experienced player and you're just looking for a second instrument to, to have around the house or to take with you to the beach or throw in the back of your car. This is a great choice too. Very lightweight, very playable. Um, gosh, what else can I say? Well, you know, this would be what I would recommend uh, first for any new player who gets into the banjo because it's it's a it, it they don't cost all that much and again they're playable. So when you go to play them, this just feels like a much more valuable, expensive instrument. And credit to Deering for for looking at the elements that they needed to put into a banjo to, to get that playability. So once again, you can also get uh, a Deering Good Time with the Resonator. And if you're interested in bluegrass primarily, you might want to look at that option. And then they do have um, more expensive models that actually have tone rings. Not to get too geeky and technical here, but as you look at the inside of this banjo, this is a totally wooden rim. Uh, and then on more expensive banjos, you will have a metal tone ring, which is also a circular piece of metal, which is placed on top of the rim. Some people actually prefer the mellower sound of the banjo without the tone ring. Tone ring also adds some weight, but the tone ring usually adds volume and clarity to the instrument as well. Uh, more expensive option. You can check out the websites and see you know, the various price levels. Now, this instrument is set up really great. The head is nice and tight. The tailpiece is set correctly. And I don't miss the tone ring. I mean, I'm getting a really bright sound out of this instrument. Pretty much walk up to a jam session and start playing and, and, and it will be just fine. And and if the bridge is set correctly, you know, you can go all the way up the neck and have it be in tune. That sounds really good. The bridge is movable. So one of the things that, you know, if the bridge happens to get knocked over, you're gonna want to learn how to put it back. But you know, we'll we'll teach you that at some point here at Peghead Nation. So again, during good time, a classic instrument that has kind of redefined what is available for a beginning level banjo player and definitely something to check out if you're new to the instrument my choice really or if you want a second instrument to to have to to take with you um, to the beach or uh, throw in the trunk of your car and you know you never know when you might want to start playing at, a, at in a traffic jam or something it's a great great instrument to have the Deering good time thanks Deering for making such a great instrument I'm Bill Evans for Peghead Nation and I'll see you again real soon <laughs>